Welcome to Tech Take. I'm Jolene Kent. Today we're going to talk about the unusual ways that the public can take advantage of new emerging technology. I'm joined now by Eric Yaverbaum. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks as always for having me. You're a New York Times bestselling author. You are also the CEO of your own uh, company, Erico Communications. And today we're going to talk about something that's going on in Southern California right now the wildfires and how yeah. new technology is being deployed to the, the wildfires are one like fantastic example of how technology can impact wildfires we can cut them down if we want they've increased by 80% since the 80s if we had drones flying over property that we couldn't get to otherwise, it could cut down on the number of wildfires in this country. That's using technology to solve a real problem. I look at things all the time that fascinate me about where technology is solving real problems. A guy named Peter Hamilton down in uh, South Beach, he's launching something called Freedom From Addiction. This is a way uh, to help uh, alcoholics, to help uh, people that are, that are addicted to absolutely anything. It's an enormous problem in this country, and it uses technology to make it easier for them to get help. Well, it's ingenious. Let's rewind and look at the wildfire situation. There has been some drone technology that has been deployed in local police and fire departments across the country, but why in particular would what you're advocating for be different? And why isn't it already being oh, it's practiced? Not, it, it's not different, it's evolving. Um, what everybody knows about drones and, and a lot of things about technology that were developed really for the military. That's what most people know. And drones sound invasive or is Amazon going to be delivering stuff to my front door tomorrow, which they're not. The, the, uh, the air is, is regulated. We can't just fly drones right, anywhere. It's regulated by the FAA, of course. Right. So anybody can't just fly a drone to do anything that they want any old time. That said, hobbyists now are flying drones. Uh, that has to be regulated, it has to be controlled, we have to uh, uh, manage that. We can't just fly them anywhere. But if we use them in ways that can help us, that's permissible. And when you're flying over property that you can't even get to otherwise, and the whole terrain is dry, and a little spark of a fire is starting, and you can see it because you have a drone, you can put out a fire instead of having a fire destroy hundreds of acres of property. What is the position of the local governments in Southern California about deploying this kind of drone technology right now? Um, I, I, I would say the best way to characterize it is open-minded. Um, it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to be a big change. It's also going to save a lot of property and right now they can't hire enough firefighters to fight the fires that are there. Drone technology is an answer to that exact problem. And which companies do you feel like are producing the type of drones that really will be able to uh, put into action what you're talking about? Uh, that's so hard to say. I mean, you know, here, here today, gone tomorrow. There, there will inevitably be, there's a dozen different companies that are market leaders right now. Inevitably, one or two will emerge as the absolute best and the, you know, the gold standard for doing things like this. Well, we also want to tackle homelessness, which is uh, pervasive in a lot of American cities. And and there has been new technology that yeah. has been developed via How mobile. Good. But I think that probably the first question that would pop into someone's head is, you know, how do you deploy solid mobile technology to help counter homelessness when homeless what, people, by is, and large, do not have mobile technology resources well, in the, fo in the form of a smartphone? Uh, this woman uh, named Rose Broom in San Francisco is walking by a homeless woman. She doesn't know how to help. What can she do? She started something called Hand Up. You should check it out. It is so cool. You want to help somebody who's homeless? Go to Hand Up. She started that. She, uh, using crowdfunding, raised money. Um, and now she's helping homeless people. In this country... How does it work? How does Hand Up work exactly? Uh, we, you, you, you can uh, give uh, cards to someone who's homeless so they can get food. Um, you can give them Band-Aids because they have a cut. You can give them a razor so that they can shave. But how exactly does that work through mobile technology and when, when you go crowdfunding? To hand, exactly. When you go to Hand Up, yeah. um, you, what you can see, you'll see profiles. You verified home, people that are homeless who need help. They marry the people who need help with people who want to give it. And it's, and it's working. It's working. It's decreasing homelessness in San Francisco. If something like that can work to, the, to uh, help a problem like homelessness, we've never, have you ever heard of that before? All we ever do is call the police and say, please move somebody from my block. Take them to the homeless shelter. 
we're not helping them that way. What Rose did in San Francisco is a model for the rest of the country, and it is being adopted in other cities. And how do you think that nonprofits that actually do currently handle homelessness on a very large scale in a lot of American cities are adopting it? What has their attitudes been towards bringing in new innovative ideas like the ideas at hand up? Um, look, here's, this is the thing about technology. Our entire lives, it, 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 it's advanced in every way, shape, and form. Well, what's different about today than 20 years ago is the rate, the acceleration at which the technology is developing. Faster and faster, better and better. So the, uh, unless you're an early adopter, it, you find technology difficult to understand. Now technology is becoming easier and easier to understand. The easier it is, the more the decision makers will use it and will adopt it and it will solve more problems. All right, Eric Gaberbaum, you're the CEO of Erico Communications, New York Times bestselling author. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. That's it for this edition of Tech Take. Be sure to check out our website. Until next time, I'm Jolene Kent.